Hey everyone, welcome back to Very Cold Lasagna. I am, of course, Dylan Lasagna. And well, week one of the 2022 NFL season is in the books for the San Francisco 49ers. As well, they were in Chicago to take on the Bears in Soldier Field. And well, the conditions weren't necessarily the brightest for either team. It was dripping wet um, all over Soldier Field in Chicago in that dump of a stadium. But nonetheless, Going into that game, you know, you felt good about week one. You felt good. You think that, you know, the 49ers um, with their roster currently in place with a strong defense uh, and an offense full of potential, you thought they would take care of business against a rebuilding team in the Bears uh, with a second year quarterback, a defensive minded first year head coach and just questions around multiple skill positions, especially that offensive line. But instead... Rather, <laughs> rather than um, take care of business, like I just mentioned, rather than, you know, show at least some positive, some positives regarding um, this team, this 49ers team, this team on Sunday r- instead decided to, to play a different kind of football, a different kind of football that their opponent has been doing for the last year, for the last 10 years. And pretty much for the last 20 years. And that is, of course, Bears football. What do I mean by Bears football, mind you asking? Well, that is, of course, while they played good defense, the play calling by Kyle Shanahan was too run-based. Too much running, too much running, too much running. And that was, of course, what their opponent has been doing for the last 20 years. Bears football. And, my God, I, of course, I, as I mentioned towards the end of my preview for this game. I couldn't catch much of this game on Sunday because I was at work. So I'm actually glad now I didn't get to catch um, this game live when it was happening because, man, I would have been so much more pissed than I am now two days later when I'm making this and when I'm talking about this. So, you know, looking at this game, looking at this game um, as I watched it, the replay of it, the 49ers defense was actually pretty damn good in this first half. They set the tone. You know, Javon Kinlaw was was pretty solid. Um, getting to Justin Fields, creating some pressure. Samson Ebercom got a nice sack as he broke through the um, the offensive line in, in that opening drive. Um, and, you know, the offense, the offense for the 49ers, they showed some solid early returns. You know, Trey Lance had a nice throw to Brandon Ayuk. Um for a good 20 plus yards. Um, but Debo, Debo Samuel, you know, how he's the, the wide back of, of the 49ers. He couldn't, c- couldn't secure the ball. He had ball security. He, he had that ball peanut punched out of him. And that was the first turnover of the game. And that eventually became a theme for the, for the day for the 49ers. But for, luckily for them, luckily for, um, luckily for the 49ers, that Bears offense wasn't really picking up quite yet. They were still be they were still able to go after Justin Fields and, and that Bears offensive line. But then we get to the second quarter, um, and the offense was you thought they were starting to heat up. Um, Trey threw another deep ball um, to Ray Ray McLeod, um, took it to the red zone, and they were within striking distance to get the first touchdown of the game and the first touchdown of the year for the 49ers. And that's exactly what they did. They did a screen run with Debo Samuel, and that's what they did. First touchdown of the year, 7-0, 49ers. But then, despite the defense's good, good effort, and then the, the Bears continued struggles on offense. And mind you, the Bears were still playing their brand of Bears football um, during this uh, first half. The 49ers didn't necessarily cap, uh, capitalize. They didn't take advantage of of the Bears' very slow start and their own hot momentum. For whatever reason, Kyle Shanahan continued to do what he he did last season with Trey Lance, and that was continued to call a bunch of runs uh, for the running backs, whether it was Elijah Mitchell, Debo Samuel, Jeff Wilson, and even Trey Lance. What did I say in my preview for this game? Stop calling a bunch of designed runs for Trey Lance. And every time he went off to go do a run, he 
for, man, apparently forgot how to slide like he did in the preseason. Like, dude, you are going to get hurt. <laughs> if your trade lance doesn't remember how to slide as well as he did in the preseason, this dude is going to get hurt um, in the long run. Like, it scares me. It scared me when he uh, just dove, like, chest first in, into the Bears defenders like that. So, too many running plays. Um, and, and I get it. The weather conditions were bad. But that doesn't mean you can't throw the ball. You got to let Trey throw. And then the Bears eventually figured it out because towards the end of the first half, they started picking up some momentum. And yes, they didn't score um, to end the first half because of the some stupidity. <laughs> because there's this weird penalty that happened where um, I think the, the Bears punter, he decided to bring out a towel um, to dampen the field, which apparently is illegal. You can't do that. So rather than get three points on the board, they had to punt. So at least initially at the time, they were they luck, the 49ers lucked out. But then you get to the, the second half. You your your momentum slowly starting to cool off. And then you get to the second half. You don't do much. You don't do much. You take a 10-0 lead. Um, you get another nice uh you get some nice progressions from Trey. But then that's just where everything else starts to fall apart. Everything else nice. Um, about week one ends for the 49ers. From there on out, all these three things become themes for the 49ers. Penalties, busted coverage and defense, and just an overall lack of urgency. Like, my God, the, the, the last, the last, what was it, 20 plus minutes of this game was just bad. It was just bad, bad football. And it was just the definition of West Coast Bears Football being played by the 49ers. Dre Greenlaw setting the tone of stupidity, making a lot of mistakes, especially a stupid face mask penalty that didn't need to be made. And that would be like the catalyst of Justin Fields getting red hot, getting the offense red hot. And there's this one specific play where Justin Fields escaped a myriad of pressure. And I think it was like Eric Armstead like causing one of his uh, linemen to trip over the other. And he was able to find Dante Pettis for a very wide open lob pass to just waltz into the end zone and make it 10 to seven, like out of nowhere, just out of nowhere. And then right after that, the offense can't respond because Kyle Shanahan decides to, nope, let's not have Trey Lance throw the ball because even though the weather is not getting uh, pouring wet yet, Let's just have the offense just run a bunch of uh, run a bunch of like running plays because we want to play some Bears football. We want to play Bears football. Let's just, let's have Debo Samuel run it, even though the offense, even though the defense is starting to figure it out. Let's have Trey run it, only to have him be short of the first down. So many opportunities uh, that the 49ers could have ran away with this game. And I forgot to mention this. Trey Lance did, did overthrow Tyler Croft, um, their backup tight end, in the first in the first quarter. So that was a mistake by him. But there are so many other things that went wrong in this game that I'm about to go uh go and in, in, get into. And that continued in the fourth quarter. The 49ers absolutely imploded in that last quarter against the Bears. More turnovers. Um, Trey Lance didn't help matters in that fourth quarter either, throwing a wide open interception to safety Eddie Jackson, uh, and even even more penalties by Aziz Al Shair, um, going helmet to helmet um, with Justin Fields. The first one did I didn't really understand why um, they called that because it was so it was nearly so wet that. Like as Alziz Al Shair was just like getting like he was just trying to control his momentum, um, just to avoid, just to avoid going helmet to helmet with Justin Fields. But then the second one was just completely dumb. It was just completely dumb. And then after the the interception by Trey Lance, the defense just completely gave up an open tough another open touchdown to um Equinemius. I can't. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, bro. 
And McCurious, uh I'm not gonna say Brown's brother. Uh they gave up a touchdown to him. And wherever the, the coverage was, it, it was awful. So now all of a sudden it's it's 16. What whatever the score, it, it's 14 to 10. It is four it no, it's 13 to 10, actually, because they missed the field goal. And then it yeah, the 49ers take the lead. It's 13 to 10. And then another touchdown happens. Khalil Herbert makes a touchdown. And then it's 19 to 10. So they allowed them to score 19, not 19 or 13 answer, unanswered points. And then when it comes to nut busting time, the offensive line can't protect uh, Trey Lance. And there, there's no sense of urgency by Kyle Shanahan to call a bunch of plays. And then the offense not helping matters either because they're just like huddling up as well. And then it starts to pour. And well, I do commend trade or at least trying to throw in the rain, but that ball is just going nowhere. So it was like too little too late when they finally start pick, started to pick up the pace. Um, and then by the time they did, they turned it over on downs and then the game was over. And then, and then they just had to like sit there and look at their sack, look at their sack, sack of themselves um, as the bears um, rightfully so, mocked them, uh, mocked their slip and slide celebration from a couple years ago as, well, the 49ers are now 0-1 uh, to start the season. Now, of course, um, I'm going to say this right now. We can't overreact quite yet to this loss. It's only the first game, so this 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 shit happens. Uh, this, this shit happens, but if it keeps becoming a theme... If it keeps becoming a theme for the 49ers, the, the turnovers, the stupid penalties, um, you know, Trey Lance not progressing as as people had thought, then, yes, then this, this game could be completely justified. But for now, we can't panic yet. We can't panic yet. Even though my, my emotions are running a bit high. So what do we take away from this? What do we take away from this? The 49ers, we're, we're, missing some play, we're, we're missing some players like George Kittle and Daniel Brunskill, but so were the Bears. They were missing uh, one of their uh, receivers, Vilas Jones Jr. Um, did the weather play a role um, for how the team played? Absolutely. Um, but it didn't start pouring. It didn't turn into a slip and slide until very late in the game. And the Bears and their head coach, Matt Eberflus, they adjusted better, much better to the conditions than the 49ers did. They actually let Justin Fields throw in the the slowly and creepily uh, wet conditions than, rather than Kyle Shanahan, who just continued to let Trey Lance run the damn ball like he's the second coming of Lamar Jackson. Like, let him throw the fucking ball, man. Like, what's so bad about it? Like, it's like you don't trust him to throw the ball. And I get it. There were some bad throws by Trey Lance in this game. But how are you going to establish trust in your quarterback when you call plays designed around Trey Lance running the damn ball all the damn time and calling these screen screen runs by Debo Samuel or Jeff Wilson and then only to get stopped by the Bears? The Bears. And then, yeah, speaking of Jerry Lance, some of you are always already anointing him as, oh, he should go back on the bench. He should go back on the bench. Put Jimmy Garoppolo back in. And what would that do to Trey? What would that do to Trey Lance's confidence? What would what would that how would that make the organization look? Like that would instantly make the organization look like they made an, an instant mistake. That an instant mistake. And I will say this. Yes, Trey Lance definitely didn't have the greatest game, but he also didn't have the most terrible game either. This was definitely a wake-up call for him. This was a learning experience for him. You gotta let him ride the string out. This is how he needs to learn. This Next week, let, let him learn from this experience and then throughout this week, make those adjustments. The offensive line did, no, it did him no favors either. Especially Mike McGlinchey, the right, the right tackle. He was just giving up 
uh, pressure to uh, do opposing the opposing uh, defensive line just free will. He did, like the offensive line didn't give much time for Trey to throw on nearly half of their drives. Dre Greenlaw and Aziz Al Shair, their their secondary linebackers, they were making stupid decisions. They were making stupid penalties. Um, and they gave up two of the t- uh, two touchdowns on Sunday. And then, of course, Al Shanahan. The play calling, how many times do I have to say this? Two Bears football on Sunday. Too much run, 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 run. Too much of that. Let Trey throw the damn thing. And stop using Debo Samuel as a as a wide back when it's been long documented in the offseason that he doesn't he barely wants to do it. That's why this whole thing started in the offseason. So how much more do I need to say? How much more do I need to say? You know, despite all the things, despite how how emotional I've gotten in this overreaction uh, edition of our recap, there are a couple of things. There are a couple of things that were good in this loss to the Bears. And that was uh, safety Talano Hufunga. And we know that Jimmy Ward is, is going to be out another three games or so. But Hufunga, he stepped up. He, ste- he stepped up in his role, made some nice tackles. Uh, he also got an inter- interception off of Justin Fields. So this was a good uh, good first showing for Hufunga of the defensive line um, against a middling, uh, before the, and of course before the second half, um, a middling offensive line in the Bears. They got a lot of good pressure um, on Justin Fields um, before he went off in the second half. So, yes, they didn't. Nec- they got eventually got tired, but once the offense starts to bounce them out, this 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 unit will be even more dangerous. Uh, Brandon Ayuk and Juwan Jennings, um, they made some good strides on on Sunday, um, connecting with Trey Lance, and it looks like with um, Ayuk's um, offseason work with Trey and of course training camp, it's starting to pay off here as well. So, of course, to end things off, um, of course, we can't overreact to this very first game, but there are some things to improve on. Um, we got to reduce the penalties, um, reduce the, the stupid mistakes. Kyle Shanahan's got to hash them out, man. Maybe he really has to. Uh, speaking of Shanahan, the play calling's got to be better next week against the Seahawks. It has to. It has to. Um, you, you, how you do that? Establish trust in Trey Lance. Let him throw the ball. Let him drop back to pass. Um, let him let him work on his on his short range uh, throwing game. You want to you want to establish confidence in him. Let him throw the damn ball. Like don't always go for the play action. Um, you gotta let him drop back to pass. And then speaking of est- establishing trust, establish trust in the running game. We don't we haven't gotten enough of that on on Sunday in in week one. Now's the time to do so, especially with Elijah Mitchell out. And it's 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 enough, Debo man. It's enough with Debo. We we gotta see something like Jeff Wilson wasn't great in week one, but it's a new week. Yes, it is. It's time to see what you got in Jordan Mason, who looked good in preseason. Now you got Marlon Mack, and once he gets himself integrated. He might be a solid option too. Tyron David Price might be your uh, decent third round option, but maybe not. But it's time to establish a real running game here rather than use Debo Samuel all the damn time. So overall, yes, this was kind of kind of a down week for the 49ers and it still is. And who knows? Maybe we not, might not even have George Kittle back yet. Um, but we'll see how this week goes. But if you're the 49ers right now, um, I would be concerned. Um, not overly concerned, but with the way that, you know, Seattle is riding high, riding high um, off their victory against the Denver Broncos on, on, on Monday Night Football, you know, 
you 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 got to motivate yourselves better to get that win at home in in week 2 on a Sunday afternoon. So hopefully they get it done. Hopefully they get it done. Hopefully they motivate themselves to do it. So otherwise, this could be a long season and even more Bears football, West Coast style from the 49ers.